Hey everyone and welcome back to the StudyTube project. My name is Manny and I am a fourth year studying computer science and philosophy at the University of Oxford. Today I'm going to be bringing you a topic in philosophy that is very accessible, very interesting and for those of you that have had no experience with philosophy will be very easy to understand and get to grips with. Before I start babbling away for hours, let's get on with it. So today I'm going to be talking about the trolley problem. Now the trolley problem is a problem that some of you may have come across before because it's quite a popular thought experiment within ethics, but it often calls into question an ethical theory known as utilitarianism, and specifically a form of that known as consequentialism. So before we delve into some of the theory, let's actually look at what the problem is. So imagine that there's a trolley on a track that is heading towards five people who are oblivious to this high-speed trolley running towards them. There is, in fact, another path that this trolley could take that would actually lead to one person. Now, whichever path this takes, the people on that path will die. Now, the interesting thing is that you're actually watching all of this take place and standing right next to a lever that you could pull and which would change the course of the trolley's path from the path that has five people to the path that only has one person. Now, I'm going to give you a moment to think. What would you do in that situation? Would you pull the lever or would you let the trolley move towards the path with five people? Now, most of you are probably thinking, I'll pull the path. And that's because in most cases, we think that the value of five lives is greater than the value of the single life on its own. But let me give you another problem that is quite similar. Suppose you have a hospital where a, pa where a doctor is looking after five sick patients that each need transplant of different bodily body organs. Now let's suppose a healthy patient happens to walk into the hospital who by mere chance has, has, happens to be a perfect match for each of these five patients. Would it be okay to, to sacrifice the life of this one patient and provide organs for transplant for each of the other five patients in order to save them? If you said no, you're like the majority of people. However, this is where the mystery lies. Although in both of the cases we were sacrificing one life in order to save five, it, it's, it's interesting to question if, why our intuition acts differently in each of these cases. This brings into question whether our moral decisions are based on outcomes or whether they are based on something else. And one candidate that comes into question by many philosophers is intention. A utilitarian would argue that each of these cases are, that are exactly the same and there is no reason for us to behave differently behave differently in either of them. That is because utilitarians argue that we must do the action that provides the greatest good to the most people. This makes most of our actions quite mechanical and not very personal, which means that even if the one person on the other track was, let's say, your friend or your partner or your spouse, that would not, call, that would not provide any grounds for you to act any differently. It is a very mechanical and methodical process. I personally find consequentialism quite interesting because I think that it turns us individually into agents of some sort of form of utility function. And it's interesting to see whether that's actually how we base our everyday life. Let us now explore some of the other aspects that might help describe our intuition. So let us think about something like intention. There's a theory known as the doctrine of double effects, which argues that we can perform actions that have negative consequences, as long as they are unintended side effects of trying to do good. Therefore, it would be okay for you to switch the track to one person, as your intention in that case would be to save five as opposed to killing one. This also calls into question how we differentiate between these intentions. So it isn't okay to kill, but it's okay to let die. One could argue, even in the surgeon case, that you intend to save the five lives. You didn't mean for the one person to die even though you required all of their organs. And that doesn't seem to sit well because it's very hard to differentiate. There seems to be some sort of problem of closeness because on the one hand, you might not intend for one to die. You might intend to save the five lives of the organ transplant, but it's hard to decouple saving five lives with organs that come from one without also intending the death of that one. So that doesn't seem like a very plausible answer to me. Another reason why intention might not be the best candidate solution is because it isn't entirely clear why the internal functions of our brain are to dictate whether an action we perform is right or wrong. Let me give you another example. Suppose now me and I'm standing next to a trolley with a friend, and that friend happens to be very racist. And the person that is standing alone on the track happens to be of a ethnicity or race that this person does not like or is prejudiced against. 
Suppose he pulls the lever because he has something against people of that ethnicity. Would it be okay for me to push this friend aside and pull the lever myself just because my intention is only looking at numbers while his intention is looking at race? To me, that would seem rather silly because we're both doing exactly the same action. But for me to push him aside and say that I wish to pull that lever just because my intentions are purer than his intentions, even though we're fundamentally doing the same act, seems rather ridiculous. And thus, it seems rather difficult to see how the inner workings of intention might dictate whether that action is correct or not. I hope this is giving you a taste of how difficult it is for us to find some form of normative theory that can tell us what actions are right or wrong. However, just because intention didn't seem like the right candidate solution doesn't mean that consequences fall back to be the preferred solution. There are many other ways of, of deciding whether an action is right or wrong, and these come down to different normative theories within philosophy. So utilitarianism is just one of them. There, if you'd like to learn more, there is also, I might also make some videos on deontology and virtue ethics. Some of you might be thinking, this is all fair and done to argue, but how is this relevant in the real world? Now, because I study computer science and philosophy, it's really interesting to see how some of these philosophical problems are directly mapped to problems within computer science. Until we know why our intuitions behave differently in different scenarios, it's very hard to program that into technology. For example, when we're programming self-driving cars, are we to tell them to prioritise the one life over five if they're ever in a situation like that? Because it's becoming more and more important for us to be able to program such decision processes into our technology. So it's important for us to identify exactly what makes us think or believe certain things intuitively. I hope you guys found that interesting. I know I surely love looking at the trolley problem. It's very much an entry level sort of thought experiment within philosophy. Um, there's a lot of literature about it on the internet if you want to read more or want to know more about it. Do let me know what your thoughts are on the trolley problem in the comment section below and I would love to hear more about it. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you'd like to see more videos on computer science and philosophy do check out my channel it's This Is Manny um, in the description box below and don't forget to thumbs up this video and click that subscribe button if you haven't already because the study tube project have new videos every single day at 6 p.m and don't forget to follow us on instagram for daily live streams as well um, thank you so much for sticking by and we'll see you guys tomorrow bye guys